Okay, so we're here to talk about the user interface of 3D Studio Max, and I've got my good friend Terry sitting yo. right beside me. Yo, yo, yo. And uh, we're just going to kind of go around and talk about all the different elements available inside of 3DS Max. We're not going to get deep into all the functionality. If you're a beginner watching the CD, it could be pretty brutal if we do We're just going to go over basics. And sitting all around the room, I'm <coughs> covered with a bunch of different students that are just waiting to be abused by us. Oh, so, yes. Um, Educate me. No, okay. <laughs> so uh, so let's just get started. First thing that you guys, of course, will note is across the top we do have a menu bar, right, Terry? Right. Okay, this menu bar, uh, for those of you guys that have been using earlier versions of 3DS Max, uh, will note that uh, we've had some things organized a little bit differently now across the top. We do have a create menu, and up underneath the create menu is a bunch of things that you can create. Modifiers, a bunch of things that we can come in here and use for modifying our objects. Animation, things that are related to animation. Graph editors, uh, two different types of editors that we'll be using. Uh, rendering, uh, pretty much anything you want to do with rendering, right? Right. <coughs> pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, you render. Uh, customize, well, customizing the user interface. Max script, things related to programming. Help, get help. And then over here at the beginning, I kind of didn't go through these. They're pretty self-explanatory, and we'll be digging through these options a little bit later on. You know, file, you're going to do a new scene, save a scene, stuff like that. Uh, edit, tools, group, views. We'll get into those. I just mainly wanted to point out kind of these new main groups right here for creating, modifying, animation, etc. Simple enough? Yeah, that's pretty simple. You okay. start playing with those, you'll get the hang of them. Yeah. Now, up underneath that by default with the default setup, we've got our main toolbar. Okay? The main toolbar... And this is located right here on this tab panel. Main toolbar is going to be something that you're going to use a lot. A, yeah. A whole <laughs> a lot. A whole lot. Inside of 3DS Max. Uh, first thing I'd like to show you is uh, since we're running at a lower resolution right now, uh, all of the different options that are available on the main toolbar are not there, are they? No, they're not. So, you know, how can I get to them? Well, you can uh, drag the bar over. You can drag the bar. Did you guys know you can drag the bar? I did not know you mm -hmm. could drag Isn't the that, bar. No clue. That is absolutely cool, right? All you have to do is put your mouse over a place on the bar where there is nothing, okay, like right here, and it just changed to a different icon, didn't it? Little it's hand. a grabby hand. It's a little grabby hand. If you click with the left mouse button and hold the mouse button down, you'll see that you can slide the main toolbar back and forth. Now... I'm going to go over here and come over here and make something real quick and do a bunch of confusing stuff that will just completely freak you out. I'm already well, freaking out. Yeah, don't try doing this at home. But what I want to show you is, you know, you see how we can slide up here? There's other places that you can slide as well. Over here, a lot of the information is not capable of fitting inside this area. So you'll notice that as I move my mouse over an area that has no uh, buttons or controls that I can click on, I get the hand again. By clicking with the left mouse button and dragging, I can drag through all these options as well. You can also grab the little gray bar on the side and drag it down. Little gray bar on the side and drag it down. Is this what you'd like, sir? That's what I'm talking about. Isn't that such a fancy, neat little scroll bar? Yes. Is that those big, sloppy ones that all <coughs> the other Windows applications use? Yeah. I know. I kind of like that, too. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, are you dying on me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's definitely dying on me. And, again, you can see here we are inside another dialog window inside of 3DS Max. Uh, this is for render scene options, and again, I'm using the little hand to scroll through it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this and update my view there. So you can see how we can scroll back and forth. Now, again, we was talking about the main toolbar as being one of the big areas you're going to hang around a lot, you know, use a lot of the different tools that are available. Right. Uh, let's go ahead and just talk about a couple of them going over from left to right. Undo, redo. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. I moved it. I didn't like where I moved it. So I came up here and I undo it. I decided that, well, I did like where I really wanted it, so I redo it. Okay, get the point? Yeah. Okay, but now... Let's no, could you explain that again? <laughs> no, I'm just, yeah, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, I need a raw fish. I'm telling you. <laughs> so let's do something interesting. I'll come back over here and let's... Uh, a little cylinder. It seems like I always pick on everybody with this one. And so I've made a cylinder, and then perhaps I want to... Uh, come over here and duplicate it. We'll make it an instance. Don't worry about trying to follow along. You'll get the, the idea of what I'm going for in just a minute. Now I'm going to come over here and apply a modifier. Let's do a bend, and we'll apply the bend to it, and you'll see that both are going to bend over. Okay, so that's good, and blah, blah, blah. But here's what I'm wanting to point out. Now we've got several things that we can undo, right? Right. Maybe, I, maybe I'll come in here and move one <coughs> guy and take the other guy and scale him down or something. There we go. Um, 
Let's get out of that, and let's go ahead and come back over here to move. Now, perhaps I wanted to start digging back through some of my undos, but I don't want to have to hit undo, 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 undo a half a dozen times. Right, right. right. A lot of people don't know this about 3ds Max, but you can come up here to the right undo click. or redo. You got it. And right click. By doing that, you'll get this little pop-up window that's going to show you all of the different commands that you have executed. Look at this. All the way back here from when we first created it, I converted it to a polygon. I then moved it. I deleted it. Something. Uh, what did I delete? Whatever I had on the screen a minute ago. Oh, this was the very first thing. Yeah, okay. you, did, you yeah, deleted the sphere. sphere. Then I created <laughs> the cylinder. I cloned it. I added a modifier to it. I did a parameter change. In other words, I applied a bend angle to it. Uh, then I moved it again, and then I selected this guy over here, and then I scaled it down. Is that going to keep track of, like, infinite? No, not it infinite. It just it does go back. Just a lot. It goes back a good way. Is there a way yeah. that you can uh, clear that list out? You know, up underneath Customize... Trying to think if there's right offhand if there is a setting. We'll come back and look at that a little bit later. Right. right offhand, it's it's not like other applications that you may be familiar with where you got to go in there and change the queue size. This automatically will remember more than ten right off the shelf. Oh, that's so. handy. So let me go ahead and come over here and let's say we want to go all the way back to right before we deleted the the sphere that we had a minute ago. So I can come all the way down here and select delete. By clicking it, you'll see that it has selected everything up above. Okay. So now you can just see where we created a sphere, converted to polygon, and we moved it. We just hit undo. Ding, 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 ding. And there we are all the way back to our sphere. Okay. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Nice thing is you'll also find that all the information that we just undid got dropped over here into the redo bin so that if we wanted to, we could come all the way back down here, select and redo. Ding, 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 ding. And we just redid everything. So you even get to watch it do yeah, it. Yeah, it actually does it step by step. It actually executes it right there. Right. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, so Very uh, handy let me too. go ahead and update that. Thank you, sir. <coughs> uh, let me go ahead and point this out, too. While recording these uh, movies for the CD, you'll find that the interface has trouble updating from time to time. Let me just go ahead and tell you what I'm doing. I'm pressing the one key on my keyboard, and that will force a redraw of my interface. So from time to time, when you see a little bit of garbage getting left behind, and I say, here, let me clean that up, I'm just pressing the one key. All right, so that's undo and redo. Coming across on the main toolbar still, we've got select and link. This is for creating a parent-child hierarchy. We'll talk about it a little bit later on. This is unlink selection. This is for breaking that parent-child hierarchy. Coming over from that, we've got bind to space warp. Which this are is, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. This is where when we start working with things like particles, we can go in there and we can use deflectors for controlling deflection of the particles, or we can use motors or vortexes, etc., to influence these particles, and those are considered space warps, and this is how we actually link particles to these. Advanced stuff for a beginner, right? Oh, yeah, so definitely. We probably need uh, I'm still not good with them. <laughs> yeah, I saw some of the stuff you were doing the other day. I thought it was pretty nice. Uh, you're so modest. So, anyways, uh, so um, I guess we, we probably need our own CD for this. What do you think? Yeah, definitely an entire CD for particles. Systems. That would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Oh, space yeah. Space warps? All right. Over from there, we have our select object. Okay. That's... What it says. <laughs> that's it. So if I go into select mode, that's all I can do. Select, 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 select. We all get the point. Coming over from that, we have basically a way that we control how we select when we marquee select on our screen. Right. Right? Yeah. So by default, <clears throat> it is set to rectangular mode, meaning that I can click, drag, and it drags out in a rectangular shape, and everything inside will be selected. Well, that's not even necessarily true, is it, Terry? No, that is not, because sometimes uh, you can actually... I mean, I could go ahead and come up here real quick, and let's go file, reset. No, nah, we don't want to save anything. Yes, we're really sure we'd like to reset. And create a few spheres. Okay. So I just created a few spheres in the scene. And I can come in here, and I can click, of course, to select them, which we'll talk a little bit more about selecting a little bit later. Right. But I could also come in and marquee select like I'm doing here. Okay. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that. If I drag upwards... There's no redraw problems. If I drag from top down, there's redraw problems. Hey, like that for figuring things out quickly. <laughs> That's interesting. That is interesting. It means a whole lot of nothing, though, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know what now? It just gets rid of the garbage off the screen. I'm sorry. Get. I'll pay you five bucks if you smack her. Okay. All right. <laughs> she she bet you can't reach free. me. I'll buy you a video game. <laughs> oh, I'm on it, dude. <laughs> it's all over. Okay. So, uh, so I guess I better drag from bottom up. But right now you can see how Marky's selecting around. But what I'm saying is do everything – does it have to necessarily – the object necessarily have to be inside my little area that I'm drawing? No, right the uh, object has to be at least within some part of the rectangle that you're dragging. Really? So I should always be able to marquee and select like this? 
Not always. You can set it to where that you have to have the entire objects within the marquee. Really? Yes. You know how you do that? Um, not right offhand, actually, because okay, I don't ever use that. <laughs> that's totally fair. But right down here, we do have the ability to control crossing, which you can't see the little tool pop up. See, I told you. It's right at the bottom. But by turning this on, now what happens if I click and drag? You shouldn't get anything. That's right, because the object has to be... Has to be entirely selected. Entirely inside the region, Within right? the rectangle, yes. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and turn that back off. I just wanted to point that out. Since we are right now talking about this different way of setting up our marquee selections, right now it is the rectangular selection region, but if I click... I'll get what is called a flyout. Let me go ahead and show you this real quick. See the little triangle down here in the corner? Kristen with the super good eyes. When did I say that? Uh, I don't know. I'm just saying it. <laughs> Can you see the triangle down here, or do you need glasses? I cannot. Let me look. Right there. Okay, yeah. No, Can you I see can. one over here? Yes. Yeah. Can you see one over here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just had to get closer. All right. So that indicates that there is what is called a flyout. By clicking and holding <laughs> my left mouse button down, you'll see all of the options available. You'll see that here is the rectangular selection region right here, which is the one that's selected. What I'm getting at is, in other words, whatever option is currently selected on the flyout, you'll actually find that option inside all of the things that are dropped down in the little window. Okay. So we'll go ahead and click. Now, instead of the rectangular region, I can come down here to a circular region, which is really cool. Now, when I click and drag out, I can click, I can do it circular. Okay, so let me update that. And then one of my favorites is fencing. fencing. And I use fencing all of the time, yes. which is really nice. Let me go ahead and hit W to maximize my screen to show you this. And I'll just click to deselect. And I could just come in here and click with the left mouse button and drag. Now I'll let go of the left mouse button. Click again. Click, click. Click, click, click. Return back to where I was, and if you watch the mouse, it will change. The icon now indicates what looks like crosshairs. I'll click, and it will select what is inside that region there. Fencing is extremely handy when you are working with a bunch of sub-objects. In other words, components that make up these objects here. Mm -hmm. And that's just a really good way to, to work. Especially with if it really didn't seem. Yeah, exactly. You and, and, you're doing a, a and you're doing object. a kind of a erratic type selection. Can you right. Can you change that to like a lasso tool, like a freehand type? That is freehand. No. Uh, oh, as for like click and just drawing? Yeah. No, that's what you got. Uh, that. That's too bad. Is that only working uh, for Why, the one that we were looking at the other day wasn't working at all. <laughs> what oh, was yeah. that? Uh, does that only work in orthographic views or can you use that in your As opposed to if I came over here and went full screen and, well, let's go ahead and change this back real quick. And clicked and drug like that. Yeah. And click. Oh, that's very cool. You like that? Wow. I do. You do. Okay, so um, now that we've taken a look at different ways that we can control our selection region when we marquee drag, uh, our little drop-down window next to it, again, we're still on our main toolbar. This guy right here, Will, Terry, do you know? It'll, uh, 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 you ding, put me on the spot, man. <laughs> My head's not working. Ding, you tell me. <laughs> ding, ding. This right here, this I, takes you to but me. I don't know either. I'm just kidding. Let's go ahead and come in here real quick, and I've made some geometry. Let me draw out. Well, let's go ahead and come in here and draw out a line real quick. Okay, so that's good. Let's go ahead and come over here and create a free spotlight in the scene. Right. And let's move that on up. All right. So maybe zoom back a little bit more so we can see what's going on. And let's go ahead and come over here and throw a free camera into the scene as well. And we'll go ahead and rotate the camera around like such. And let's go ahead and, well, let's go ahead and just view through it. So we'll say camera and. You see nothing. You see nothing until we move back, pan it over, and there you go. All right, so now let's go ahead and switch over to a perspective view. And inside our perspective view, we'll go ahead and come down here and let's just kind of rotate around so we can see there's our little scene that we've just made. This little section up here will allow us to come in and select filters. Right now we're capable right. of selecting everything. What are you saying right for? Well, I, it's coming back. I know what <laughs> you're doing. So. Is <laughs> if I come in here and say change it from all to geometry, right, mm -hmm. and we'll just grab our regular select tool, and I try to grab my camera, not having much luck, am I? No, because it's locked. Grab my cool. little shape down here, I drew, I'm not having much luck, am I? Right. If I come all the way back here and try to grab my light, Again, not much luck. But if I try my spheres, bam, I got my spheres. Because they're geometry. So it's just little filters that you can come in here, you know, shapes only. Now let me marquee select again. Boom. I just get this little line that I drew. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just a way to come in and set filters, selection filters, on what you can and cannot select. I can come down here to the combos area, which is pretty cool. And inside combos, I can go ahead and create. We're not going to spend a lot of time looking at this, but I can go ahead and say, 
maybe I want to be able to select geometry or say geometry and lights. And this will allow me to come in here and, you know, set it up so that that is all that I can select, okay? And then you'll see that when I click, drag down, that I now have geometry and shapes right here. And that's all I can select. So I get both of those. <coughs> it's okay. really customizable. Yes, it is yeah. customizable. Despite my recent bout of idiocy <laughs> there, I really use this all the time. So <laughs> Sure we do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There, it's actually extremely helpful because sure if you have a lot do. of lights in the scene and you don't want to select them, you okay. just go up there and only select the geometry of it. Absolutely. Okay, so the next thing we do is we come over here and we got select by name. Select by name is pretty important, isn't it? Oh, yeah. that. Oh, my God. That thing's so important. So if I click on it, I get this nice little dialogue, select objects. You're going to actually see this dialogue often. There yes. are a lot of operations that you can do inside of 3ds Max that will require you to select another object to complete the operation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's difficult to select that object if it's a dense scene, right? Right. So if you press the... It's the H key. You got it, man. You press that H key, it'll pop this up. And it's the regular select objects box, <coughs> but it's going to be aware of the tool that you're using. Like right now, it's just select objects. And if I come in here and say, give me sphere 01 and 02 and hit select, I've got sphere 01 and 02 to select it, right? Right. But let's say I selected this guy right here, and I wanted to parent him to somebody else. Came up here and selected this link tool that we looked at just very briefly a second ago. Right. Now hit that H key. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Select parent. It's the exact same dialogue we saw a second ago, but now it's wanting us to come in there, and whatever object we select is going to become the parent of this sphere right here. Very mm -hmm. pretty, pretty snazzy, huh? Right. So we'll go ahead and cancel out of that. I just wanted to show you how, as we come through and start using the different tools inside of 3ds max you're going to actually see this dialogue quite a bit so i guess what i need to do is go ahead and come out of my link mode so i can stop seeing the select parent <laughs> all right so now here we are select objects we get a listing of all the objects in the scene but of course you know if you're going to get real fancy in 3d and try to get a good job and everything you're going to be working with scenes that contain more than one or two objects right right which means you may have thousands of things right exactly which well, is usually what happens okay so. so because of that we have the capability to come over here and it's really nice, so, you know, we can sort alphabetically by type, by color, by size. We have a little box up here where we can come in and type stuff in. I just hit S, and look at that. We it's just selected all, all the S's. Awesome. So now if we sphere O, 1, dink. What's really cool is when we got, like, say, a whole character in there with a ton of different bones. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you've got the geometry, all your point locators, your inverse kinematics. Don't worry, guys. Don't let that freak you out because we'll do a <laughs> CD that covers character right, setup. Right, yes. But what's that? I said, I'm freaking. Okay, no freaking allowed here. You just kick back and pay attention. Um, but anyways, if you go in here and let's say you need to select all of your bones because you're doing a skinning operation, you can just simply come in here and say, uh, B, O, up, oh, there they all are, and select and you're ready to go. Right, right. So very handy. Uh, over here to the side, this is really cool. we got list types. And you can come in here and say, you know, I'm going to work with just my lights and cameras, but I don't want any of my geometry around. I can just turn geometry off and geometry is removed from the list. So it narrows down my selection. Extremely. You know? So very handy. But let's say I wanted to work with only lights. I could turn lights off and invert my selection. And there's just lights. Right. Awesome. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. That's easy to use. That's pretty cool, huh? Wow, I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? And we'll take a look at selection sets in a little while. You could, oh, you could do some You know cool what would make stuff. that easier? What's that? If you named your <laughs> objects. If I named them? If you named your objects. So I guess when we get into the working with objects section, we should take a minute and talk about naming it's objects? It's very important. Because if you see a ton of different things that are called things like... F-spot 1 through 27. Okay, then I have no <laughs> clue as to what they are. Exactly. Okay, so you see how we can come in here. Let's go ahead and recheck everything. There's all of our objects again. Uh, selection sets. Basically, you can create your own special type of selection sets. Um, I guess we can take a... Nah. <laughs> we'll get to that a little bit. <laughs> you know, thinking about it, it's like, it's so easy. Yes. But, you know, then I kind of looked over at Kristen, who's like yanking on her lip or tongue or whatever right now. <laughs> and she's confused, so we won't, we won't talk about that. And there's a few other things that you can do. We'll just keep it to the basics right now. Basics are you can type something in to quickly uh, filter your selection or your objects that you can select. We have our list types, and we have our different ways of sorting. So good enough. Basically, once you've selected what you're interested in selecting in here, just press the select button, boom, and those are the things that are selected. As you can now see, my camera selected along with my two spheres. Pretty simple, huh? Yep. All right. From there, moving over to the right, we've got our three transform tools. Transform. We will talk about transforms a little bit later, and I will say this again. But anytime you hear someone say the word transform, immediately think about what? Moving, rotating, and scaling. Moving, rotating, and scaling. Okay. Position, orientation, and the size of it. 
So if I wanted to, I'd come in here and select my old move tool and select something and move it. And if you miss like that, <laughs> just come back in and try one more time. Bink, and we have now moved our object. Okay? Pretty simple. Pretty simple. If I wanted to scale it, scale tool, scale it up, scale it down. If I wanted to rotate it, I guess we should find something that you could see rotate. Yeah. How about this? All right. <laughs> Grab the rotate tool. We'll come over here. Rotate. What do you think? Simple? It's very simple. But, you know, it's kind of cool that you can right-click on these two, right? Yes. Some things inside of 3ds Max that you're working on, you'll come to find out that by right-clicking on them, you can get special things or special pr additional parameters that you can use. In other words, let's say I'm in here and I'm moving right now, and I needed to do something with precision. Even though there's all sorts of different places we can do this from, I can come in here and say... I want to right-click on this guy, and I now have the ability to move him in absolute world coordinates, or I can do an offset. Let's say I wanted to move him in the y-axis, in this direction right here, um, 10. Boom, and we just moved him 10 units. Notice that this went back to zero. Why do you think it went back to zero? Because you are not in the absolute world. Ha <laughs> ha! You should have just told me to shut up because this is getting too complex for our viewers, don't you think? Nah. Okay, so I'll talk about it then. <laughs> well, you're, you're close. Offset to the world. Right. Basically, I gave him 10 units to offset from where he was. From where he was because it's not the absolute world. Reset back to zero after right. he made that. So now if I wanted to offset him again. What's nice is we can click on these spinners and we get the visual, you know, if we wanted to come in here and precisely, you know, see exactly. what's going on. Yes. You know, makes sense. Very cool. You get one of these for move, for rotate, and for scale. Now... What do we have in the bottom corner, Kristen, of our scale button? A triangle. Meaning it's a what? Fly out. It's like a fl Hey. Man, Logan. Logan coming from the backfield. Wow. <laughs> man. And Logan's, what's up, Logan? Yeah. What's up, uh, man? How's it going? It's all right. Are you digging it so far? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Does it look pretty easy? Yeah. Good. <laughs> so, Hesitation. Yeah. Yeah. I better say yeah or keys, Buzz man. is going to throw me out. No. No hot keys right now. Okay. We're just going to keep it simple. Push pointing to the different things on the UI. <laughs> so anyways, uh, we got a little flyout, as Mr. Logan says. I'll click, drag, and from the flyout, we have three different types of scales that we can use. By default, this one right here is our uniform scale, which does provide a uniform scaling up and Every down. single way. If I click and then I come down one, now we have a non-uniform scale, okay? And right now, it's going to tell us, basically, warning, applying a non-uniform scale or squash in this way, places the transform alter all modifications in the stack, which is probably not what you blah, want. Blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Look how Pretty long much. that is. I would not read that. So another word. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Would you like fries with that burger, sir? <laughs> <laughs> um, <Barbecue. laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's really good to read things because what? Especially when it says warning. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree. Yeah, yeah let it <laughs> <laughs> the ball tonight, man. It says warning. There is if a this problem. Says warning, you should stop and read. Of course, here's See, Kristen. See, but I would have known that because I wouldn't read it. So here's Kristen. She's like, blah, blah, blah. Please don't ever show again. <laughs> yes. So do you want, and I'll just leave it on don't show again. But what it's saying right now is modifications that you apply to this using this type of a scale, okay, are not being saved onto our stack. They're not things that we can come back and undo from later if our undos run out, get changed, or flushed. Well, why not? Okay? Because it's not being stored on our stack. And we'll talk about the stack in a little while. But it's I wonder why. So let me <laughs> tell you this. <sighs> Some people are just hard to work with. X form modifier. They can't see that I am pushing at the monitor. Touch, touch, touch. X form modifiers are special modifiers that we can apply onto an object that allow us to. Well, I guess I can do this. X form modifier. It allows us to store these modifications on our stack, and then we can go back and actually change them at a later date and time if we want to. Okay? Oh, that's a horse of a different color. <laughs> Duh. Hello. <laughs> Jeez. So, you, you got a fish. Huh? Oh, yeah, i go get one. I need a fish. <laughs> I'm wearing socks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say Doritos. I said fish. Oh, Doritos. <laughs> okay. So do you wish to continue? We'll tell it We'll tell it yes, and we're not going to show this I mean, anymore. you're not going to press that button unless you want to do it anyway. So, so well, that's, true. that's my thought. So <laughs> if we go in here now, I can now scale these in a particular axis. So now, I noticed in the hmm. viewport that uh, -M -M. whenever you're scaling it out like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, I'm sorry, what? No, that's okay. Keep, continue. No. <laughs> Whenever you're scaling it like that, I noticed that some, when Hi. you're scaling How the... You uh, <laughs> yes? When you're scaling the sphere outwards, uh -huh. the edges of it are growing dark. Why is that? 
Well, what do you think, Mr. Terry? Could it have something to do with the lighting? The lighting could do that, but how would you get that off there if that's like got a lot of stuff on the scene? You mean if I wanted to do... Tink! Yeah, exactly like that. that. Yes. Hmm. Seems like that's kind of confusing to me to talk to people about right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because... All right, I'll tell them, you idiot. All right, just kidding. Yeah. Um, all I did was hit Control L on the keyboard, mm -hmm. and what Control L does is disables. Well, it doesn't actually disable; it toggles this viewport's default lighting back on. Okay. Yeah. If I hit Control L again, we'll go back into the lighting that we've placed in the scene, which is just a single spotlight. How do you like that? Yeah, that's cool. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Okay. I knew that. I just wanted the viewers to know. Back up in the flyout for the scale. Yeah, my <laughs> good friend. It seemed like there was a sub flyout there. A sub flyout? Yeah, like this is right who's there. currently selected. Oh, yes. Okay. So let's come down here to our squash that. and squash it. You'll notice, as we'll go back into Control L, as I'm sure Terry is hinting at, I'd like to be able to see <laughs> what all the object looks like. I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, I'm not arguing. As we come in here and we basically scale this thing now down in the Z axis, I'm keeping my volume. I'm maintaining volume, right? Right. So we're squashing. Getting narrow, but we're still maintaining volume, right? Right. So, Kristen, if we were going to animate, this would be a good thing to animate if we wanted to have a ball bouncing across the ground? Yeah, I suppose. So come animate the ball. <laughs> uh -huh. Let's see you animate a ball. Really? No, because you'll probably just kill Max. <laughs> oh. So, thanks anyway. I'm going to cry. She never okay. reads warnings. You're not going to cry. You're just going to give me another defensive look, <laughs> which means for those of our viewers that can't see. Oh, come on, man. She's going <laughs> to... <laughs> big watery eyes. <laughs> she's going to puff her cheeks up really, really big <laughs> and look like a blowfish. That's right. Okay, so let's Here's go that. ahead and switch this back off over. Throws you doesn't it? So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt me, Mommy. Okay, so basically all we've talked about right here on our main toolbar still is our transform tools. Over here is our manipulator tool. Manipulators are something new to 3ds Max 4. We'll talk about them. Uh, not in this particular CD. We'll do it in a later CD, but it's a way that we can put visual sliders on our screen. Very useful for and textures. Yeah, for textures? Yes. Okay. Trust and me. <laughs> very useful for character animation and rigging. Where you oh, yeah, take, that too. Yeah, whatever. You can take a, a manipulator and you can tie that manipulator back into a, a particular object, like a rotation or something on an object. And then as you adjust the uh, actual manipulator, it's going to actually cause something to rotate. But anyways, as for uh, selecting and using our manipulators... Over that, now notice again, now, some of you guys out there that are running uh, 3DS Max at high resolutions, you won't have to scroll our main toolbar here, but we're just going to scroll this on over a little bit more. Right here, you remember what this one's for? It's for... You have no clue, do you? No, I don't. You really don't? I do, reference? but I don't. Yeah. A reference? <laughs> what, uh, it's just stuff that I never use. What reference? <laughs> it's what reference coordinate system are we going to use? An example. Let me go ahead and Oh, come wait. In I here. do use that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I swear. I use that a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm I guess I should here. know what it says. Huh? I'm going to reset my scene. I'm going to take an object, create object in the top viewport. There it is. Now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to right-click, grab the rotate tool, rotate the object. Then come into perspective and make a large screen. Don't worry, by the time you get done with this CD, you'll be able to do all these things and more. And more. For just 1994. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> so we've now rotated this thing. And look at our look at our um, our little transform gizmo. That's what this little thing's called right here. If I wanted to move this thing parallel to the way it's lying right now, I'd have a little bit of trouble, wouldn't I? Yes. I mean, I could come in here and I could say move and grab this corner. But, you know... Uh, uh, It'd just be a pain uh, in the that, butt. That's just not going to be nice and smooth. But if I came up here to my reference coordinate system and changed uh -huh. it off of view over to, let's say, its local coordinate system, right. that's what's going to happen to our transform gizmo. Tink. Interesting. The very. So now if I put my mouse over X, it'll now, follow right along exactly. with Exactly. And there's a bunch of different things in here we can do to the parent, we can do to the world, which is going to max... Uh, match our little tripod axes down here. We can do to the screen, and we can do to the view. Okay? What do you think? Pretty simple? Yeah, oh, yeah. View is default. Basically, what view means, I'll talk about it real quick, is inside our different view panels, basically, as you activate one, X is always going to point. Let's go ahead and make our gizmo a little bit bigger there. X is always going to... How'd you uh, do that? Uh, plus and minus. Keys. Plus and minus. Keys. Yeah, we'll talk right. about them more a little bit later. So, X is always going to be left and right. Y is always going to be forwards and backwards, as you see here. If mm -hmm. we're using view, and this is in orthographic views only. We'll talk more about that when we talk about viewports. Over here, we see that it's showing Z is up and X is back and forth. But watch, the moment I click over here, watch what happens to Z. Boom, it becomes Y. Okay? What the... 
The reason is, <laughs> this is this is set to your view. And again, inside the view and reference coordinate system, uh, if you're using view type, it's always going to show in your orthographic viewports, it's going to show X is left and right, Y is up and down. So here we've got Z going left and right. What's going to happen when I activate this viewport? It's going to change it to X. Gonna, Absolutely. Yeah. Click, and now we see that this is now X going back and forth. Now, while you're in the view uh, reference coordinate system, our perspective view will always match the world. Okay. So you can see that's what's going on there. So um, anyway, so we've got just some different things in there. Good enough. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the use pivot center or use basically how we're going to use our pivot points. Right, Terry? Right. Can you tell us anything about this? <clears throat> okay. What I can tell you is that uh, the pivot points it's are... It's a pretty little button with a little triangle and a lower... Right. I'm yeah. sorry. Two little thingies up there. Okay, yes. with two little thingies. Um, okay, what I can tell you is that... So that's pretty good. The next thing I'll do is show you guys how... No, go oh, ahead, please, oh, continue. No, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, oh, the little button with the if, little... If we click the little <laughs> drop down, we get the little fly out. Now tell me about these little pretty square men with red circles, whatever they are, little boxes. Those don't look like men. I don't know, whatever they are. You tell me what they are, Kristen. I don't know what they Make are. Make something up then. You confuse me now. You say they're men, and I don't know. I don't know what those are. Those would be little boxes. Jeez. Go ahead, Terry. All right, man. You put me on the spot here because now... There are different ways of controlling trolling. if we have multiple objects selected. In other words, if I was to come in here, let's say... Oops. We don't want to use that method of doing that. Um, let's see. Pull this over to the side. Perhaps right there. Go as a copy. Full screen. And right now, if I was to select both these objects, where's my pivot point? It's in the between them. In between. Look at the little picture we have. Two boxes with the little red, which is indicating our pivot points in the center. Right, because so it's right I was between them. To come in here and rotate now, okay, we're rotating around that center point. If I click and hold this down, maybe I want to go through them, you know, individually. So now I can give their individual ones. Right. Okay. And then we have another <coughs> one at the bottom that we can use to actually, basically, we can come down here and we can pick our own thing that we want to rotate around, and then this will switch us over to rotating around the object that we've picked as well. That's I see. Okay? Cool. So it is a way of quickly coming in and controlling how we're going to rotate around a particular pivot point. That's all that's for. So let me go ahead and just come back in here, click, drag, and we'll set it back to that. Next thing I want to show you is this X, Y, and Z, and the X, Y. These are restrict to a particular axis. You know, you've been seeing as I've been transforming, you know, we've got three different axes that we can transform objects in. We've got X, Y, and Z. Okay, so right now I'm restricting back and forth to Y. Now I'm restricting to just Z and now just to X. You'll notice if you watch up here in the main toolbar area that as I restrict to each of these, you'll see that the button automatically becomes pressed in. With uh, 3D Studio Max version 3 and above, this transform gizmo became available. If you're using version 2.5, I mean, the CD will still pretty much work for you. But if you're using version 2.5 or below, you didn't have this transform gizmo. Basically, it looks like this. There's your, makes two of these red. That's how you'll actually know where your pivot point is, okay? Mm -hmm. But with version <coughs> 3 and above, you now have this transform gizmo, which got us away from having to come up here to restrict our movement. Uh, to a particular axis, so we can just simply now use the gizmo to constrain it to a particular axis for us. Okay? Right. Which I'm doing by just simply moving the mouse over it and then clicking and dragging. But you can still come up here and restrict in this manner by simply clicking on the button, and you'll see that as I click, each of these stems of the transform gizmo is highlighting yellow, okay? And I do have a little flyout over here that I can click, and I can basically transform along a plane, okay? So if I wanted to do like X, Y, You'll see how both X and Y are now yellow. Mm -hmm. In fact, it might even be better to show you this if I go ahead and turning off my transform gizmo, which I can do with X. Sometimes that's important. If you're working in a real detailed scene, that thing can get away. Right. right. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's not a good thing. By hiding it all together, you know, it basically means I'm going to have to place my mouse over an object so that I can actually transform it. Okay? Right. But now to restrict, I don't have this transform gizmo anymore. So uh, what I'd need to do is I'd need to come up here to my main toolbar, and I'd need to use my restrict to axes, X, Y, and Z, or a particular plane. Does that make sense? Oh, exactly. Okay. That's exactly right. So pretty good? Yeah. All right. So we'll go ahead and let's delete these out real quick. 
And I'll hit W. We'll come back in here. Let's go ahead and create a sphere real quick. Don't forget to hit X. And we'll hit X to bring it back. Thank you very much, Terry. We'll right-click mm -hmm. over here. And let's come down to Convert to Editable Poly. Just trust me on this one. I'll switch over into Polygon mode, and we'll grab all these center. We'll delete them out. Delete, isolate it. Yes. Oh, we missed just a few in here. Bear with me. And we'll delete these out here. And again, yes. There we go. Half a sphere, right? Right. Okay, interesting enough. No, not really. But what I do want to it's show you a sphere. is the next thing that you encounter uh, coming across in the main toolbar is our mirror selected object. And oh, by yeah. clicking on this with mirror selected object, what's what a mirror? A mirror. <laughs> mirror, mirror. <laughs> oh, sorry, I had to get you on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll just store that in the back and I'll remember to come back to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, mirror, however you want me to say it. Basically, this will allow me, you'll notice that when I first click on it, notice which way the object is right now. Right. Click. I am now seeing it there. I had to move this to up, have the viewport update. Oh, I see. Now you'll see that it's mirrored around the x axis. We could do y, we could do z. Can't really tell with this circle. Know, but yeah, but if I come in here, let's leave it on x. Right <coughs> now, look at our clone selection. In other words, clone, copy, duplication. Right now, no clone has been selected, right? Right. But if I do a copy, dink, there's my original one, and there's my copy. Yes. Pretty good? Yeah. Instance, reference, and we're going to talk about instance and reference a little bit later, which are definitely pretty cool. And then we've got some more settings. We get into things that are dealing with character setup, so we're not going to talk about those right now. We also have an offset in here so that if we wanted to come in here, and basically all I'm doing is clicking and dragging Okay, you can see as I'm dragging here, and I'm just putting an offset in there. Make sense? If you were to model like half a head, this would right, be the way. Right, that's where it becomes extremely Absolutely. Helpful. Just come in here, boom, do the other half, mirror it to the other side. <clears throat> that's perhaps an instance and away you go. Yes. Pretty cool? Yep. All right, so from there, next thing we have is our array tool. We actually have several different things up under here. This is, uh, this is a little bit more advanced than what I'd like to get into right now, but I will just quickly come in here, activate the tool. Basically, this dialog allows me to do some copying, and I have my three different methods of copying, a copy, an instance, and a reference, and we'll talk about those in the object section. But I can come in here, and I can do an array of objects or of object copies, okay? If I wanted to make a spiral staircase, I could or say... Or a chain. Or a chain. I could say I want a count of how many, and I want it to perhaps move in 3D, and I can control rows if I wanted to make it like a grid. I can control how much we're going to increment it in X, Y, and Z for movement, for rotation, for scale. A bunch of different settings that I can set in here to create things like a chain link from just a simple... Mm -hmm. a torus or a spiral staircase, etc. But, you know, you can go in here. Feel free to play with this if you'd like. We're going to explore a little bit more a little bit later on. Right. All right. <coughs> so we'll go ahead and cancel out of that. Okay. Over here, we have our little align tool. We've got several different alignment methods. Again, this is going to be something that we're going to focus on more when we get into the modeling section, but it's for doing alignments. Coming over to the right of that, now here's something that you'll probably use a lot, and we'll talk about this when we get into objects, working with objects and dealing with selections. But this is our quick selection area. You'll notice by default, when you first start a scene, it is empty, and it's as you come through here and start creating selection sets that they will begin to appear in here. I guess let me go ahead and take two seconds and show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let me go ahead and come back over here. I wasn't going to show you this, but I guess it won't hurt <laughs> real quick. Got a few spheres, right? Maybe I want to be able to come in here and quickly select these things, so I'll just go and hold Control down, select all three. I'll come up here, click in this area, and say uh, My Spheres, and hit Enter. That's it. Done. Notice how it's gone? Yep. Click My Spheres. Tink. There they are. Very nice. Very cool. handy. If Very you were, helpful. Let's say you were working on a city scene and you had divided your city up into different major blocks. Right. Then you can go in here and name them, do your different block names, and boom. So, in fact, one time I used this when I was working on just like a skyscraper type building for mm -hmm. different sections inside the building. Oh, wow. Furniture, et cetera. Yeah, it extremely helpful. Works really good. thing that you got to know is, you know, when you're working with this, how do you go back in there and you edit your selection sets and stuff like that? Do you know how to do that? Simply click on it. <laughs> I clicked on it. Now, what do you mean by edit them? If, do you want to rename to, them? What if I wanted to add this guy into that selection set? Oh, well, you can select your uh, selection set, and if you hit Control, should you be able to select that object also? Yes, but I want it to be automatically selected when I select this selection set. Oh, I see what you're saying. Then I have no idea. So, no clue at all? No, because I don't think I've ever done that, actually. Yet. Really? <laughs> yes, because <laughs> I always group things. Edit name selections. I found it by, uh, let me go ahead and repeat it. Edit. Mm -hmm. Edit name selections. Ah. Aha. Uh -huh. 
It's so simple spheres, that it's easy. The three objects that are in, okay, mm -hmm. my selection, my spheres. And we can come over here. Let's just drag it out of the way. And I'm not getting a good update here. We'll go ahead and hit Add. And by hitting Add, it brings up um, a Pick by Name okay, dialog that we saw earlier. Right. And if I want to talk, just add one of those spheres in. I'll tell it to Add. So now we've got all of these in there. I'll go ahead and say OK. We'll update our viewport. Now, when I come in here and say My Spheres, look at that. Uh huh. Interesting, right? Yes. And from in there, we can delete these out. We can change the name, etc. So this is just quick selections. Okay. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so from that, moving over to the right, next thing we have is the track, track view. view. How important is this? It gets very important later on. If the, I had some sort you, of animation, is it critical? Yes. Okay. Because you can work in this thing without even having to see your scene. Should we prove it to him? Yes, please. I mean, could I come in here real quick and let's say I want this sphere right here. And I'm going to turn the animate button on, drag this guy over here, move it over, drag it over here, move it. Don't ask me what I'm doing. Up, okay. Drag it over here and scale out or zoom out, move this back over here, turn animate off, and we, we have some animation, right? Right. Okay. So now if I was to come back over here into track view, and let's say we want to come up under our objects, and as I come down, we'll now notice, and I'll cover this more later when we start talking about animation, but you can see Sphero 4 has got an animation track on it. Right. And if you, let's go ahead and minimize this. If you come down here, this selected object just happens to be called Sphero 4. Sphero 4. Is that convenient? That's yeah, very. Mm, a little suspicious there. <laughs> so let's go ahead and come back in here, and let's go ahead and expand Sphero 4. Uh, it's my transform track that has, what does transform mean again? Not you, Terry. You. Move, scale, and rotate. Look at the man. He's getting fast. He's nice. learning something. Hopefully our viewers will be learning something by now, too. <laughs> so we've come in here. Our transform, well, we animated the movement of it, right? Yes. So it makes sense that it would be on the transform. So if we expand transform, oh, we have what's called keyframes on our position track. Very nice. And let's go ahead and just kind of move this over to the side. The little gray eggs. And I can switch over into my function curves, and now I can actually see the animation that I've placed down. Let's go ahead and frame this up, and there it is. And if I wanted to, I can come in here and I can start animate or changing this animation information. Okay? Right. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple? Oh, yeah. And that becomes very key later so, on. So basically, inside of our track view, we do all of our animation work for the most part. I mean, not necessarily all of it, but we do a pretty good Most bit. of it, yeah. Okay. If you want to tweak it, that's you the place to go. You want to do your absolutely. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. So that's working with our track view. Yep. Next to it, we have our schematic view. Schematic. Now we're going to spend no more than about half a second in here. Ready? Yes. Set. We're done. This is our schematic view. The schematic view shows a hierarchical representation of your scene. So a couple of different ways that we can actually view it. Okay. Now, in here, when you see your different objects, we can come in here and we can double-click on these, and we can expand. We can see the actual object and its transform node. I heard the schematic view wasn't very good. Well, you know. It has cool curvy lines. Or is it an opinion thing or it's, what? It's an opinion thing. It takes getting used to when you're used to some of the other applications out there. Schematic view in 3ds Max kind of came into the, the whole game a little late, while some of the other big 3D applications have kind of built up around mm -hmm. their schematic view type thing. Okay, yeah, but got the they don't have the cool little arrows. <laughs> you like those arrows, don't you? <laughs> yeah, make them bend some more. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. do, you, do you like that a whole lot? If we could animate that, I'm that would work. I'm buying this for that. <laughs> so, uh, so we can come in here and you guys get the idea. Yeah. Okay. Schematic view, we can have multiple schematic views. Just change the name and you can have different ones that basically have all of your objects laid out in different ways depending on you know what you're working with. It's kind of handy coming back in. And I can show you that if we uh, just close that out. But it's called schematic view one, That you know the first one right there. If I come up to graph editors that we saw earlier, right. there's our schematic view. And there's schematic view one, the first one that we just opened. So if we opened, you know, if we came in now and said opened up a new one, we could start giving these guys names and we could have them set up in specific ways. Very handy yeah. for, uh, for working with your scene. Okay, But, again, it's just a graphical representation of all the objects in your scene, and you can use it for, you know, quick parenting, selecting, et cetera. Okay? So from there, let's go ahead and refresh our viewport. Let's come over here. Next thing we have is what is called the material editor. Material editor is great. Hopefully we'll get to spend a little bit of time inside it, inside this CD right here. Oh, yeah. Material editor is how we can assign paint to our objects. Does that sound good to you, Terry? Oh, yeah. So we've got this hot spot here selected. I'll come down to my diffuse color. I'll go ahead and click. I get my color picker from inside here. Let's say a red color, red. Close, and now I'll just simply grab, drag, drop, and we've applied the color red paint down there. And we can apply more than just colors, okay? 
I can come down here. Let's grab this. And hey, like that. Does that not interest you, Terry? For our viewers right now, just relax, kick back. Look what we got. Ah, Guess I what I hit? You hit E? Yes, I did. You find that interesting? I find that very interesting. So do I. Why now, did that do that? Do what now? I don't know. I'll let you tell me that one. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. And Sounds fun. So let's go ahead and switch Well, back first over. let's mention that, though, because that's kind of important. Well, E, if we come over here into any one of our orthographic views, E will come in here and switch it back over also. Huh. <laughs> oh, that's great! All right, this is what this is what E has done inside of 3ds Max forever. Basically, it's brought up our track view, and if you get caught in this situation, you need to come all the way up here into the corner and right click, and then you can come down and get out of it. It's funny to watch people get stuck in this because getting out of it is not necessarily yeah. An easy that, that's because you have like that one pixel you can hit up in the corner. Yeah, so now we're back <laughs> out of it, but. Um, Earlier it was working, and it's not something that I've been using a lot, so if you, you know uh, what I may have done to have messed it up. but You e set the up the uh, earlier when you were messing oh, around. Oh, I loaded you put all the Max of the 3. 3DS the Max 3. No, but that was just the, uh, oh, I bet it loaded the hotkeys too. Right. Oh, Because awesome. if you're used to working in Max 3. Because what happens is in Max 4, the default, um, I believe the default, now I've got it, me doubting no, myself. No, no, no. <laughs> I, no, it is the default. I will agree with you. All right. The default, what it does is centers the object that you're working on that is selected right and it's that's actually extremely helpful and you come very dependent on that but if you're on max four and i mean max three and under e brings up your track view in that particular in that particular viewport absolutely. that you're working in so and right now i could just come in here you know if you're using max three right i could come in here and on this zoom event which we'll get to all of these navigation controls shortly i could click hold and say zoom extends to selected object. Right. And now we've got the same thing. Exactly. That's exactly what the E button does. So basically what we're getting at, why I kind of got caught off guard right here, was because I earlier we, I was going through with my lackeys here and showing, <laughs> them a, showing them a few different things before we started uh, actually rolling some tape. And we took a look at how we could change our UI to mimic, you know, Max 3 or a different discrete type products through color, such as combustion, flame, etc. Exactly. And uh, basically it got left on Max 3, which don't, you know, all this is the same, Max 3, Max 4, it doesn't matter. Right. But my hotkeys have been changed, and so far, you know, I've not been using a lot of hotkeys. And, <laughs> and the E button's the first thing to bite us in the rump. So anyway. That will be remedied in the future. So Yes. <laughs> we will change this back on the next thing. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here, and let's rotate around. We saw how we can apply some color. I mean, I can come down here if I wanted to and say, you know, this needs to be a little bit shiny. Uh, perhaps I need to tighten this up a little bit. Uh, I also have the ability to come in here and, again, using this material editor that I'm talking about, I can also apply uh, some textures instead of just a, a color. Exactly. So in my diffuse channel on this uh, sample slot, I'll go ahead and come over here, click my little button, and I'm uh, a checker. Everybody uses a checker. It's day. not an animation until you have a checker pattern. Okay. So a great man once said that. Let's let's tile this by three and by three, and I'll just simply click, drag over here. But holy cow, Terry, I don't see, I don't see this wonderful. Where'd my mouse go? All right, that's it. There it is. Aha. I don't see this wonderful black and white color over here. That is correct. Because I need to push a special button. Exactly. You need to show your map in the viewport. Now where's it at? It's not there because you're. Um, why is that not there? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. Come you on. have to show textures? Tell me, why is it not there? I'm guessing here. Yeah, oh, you have to put a UVW map on it. Hey, God. Ah. Because you cut the Are sphere Are we getting in half. fancy here? Oh, I'm getting so fancy. So you'd like me to come over here and uh, now we're really going to freak everybody. Yeah, right? uh, don't try to follow this because you will get lost and so you'll probably yeah. break it. So you want me to do uh, just, uh, There you go. Yeah. Like <laughs> that. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, it is pretty gross. Do you need a rag? I'm good. Okay. I have, I have a question. We're just but uh, no, we don't want to talk to you no more. So anyways, <laughs> fine. We'll go. You're just trouble. So we'll go in here and we'll just keep working and pretend that she never actually said anything. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually see that we've got our right, and you can start playing with those. So, but well, we need to those go to those will right? And right. Can actually come but here you know, this probably should be saved for a later date. Oh, there. Should, oh I'm sorry. Because this will start getting really in depth. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I guess you can. So, all right. So I guess what I can do though is go and but start playing with that because it's really fun. To, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So all right, it is. I can't help it. <laughs> this CD's free, so right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I mean, with the gizmo selected, I come in here and move it now. Exactly, rotate it. I can come over here to my transform tools again, and we can really start doing cool stuff like rotating it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. And let's do some scaling. So we can scale it. But why aren't we getting anything? 
because it is. Come on. It, you, you, you why am I? Why are you letting me put you on the spot a whole lot? Let's do it. Oh, cool basketball scale. night. Dum, 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 <laughs> dum, 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 dum. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, so you get the idea of what's going on, right? Right, exactly. It was a uniform scale. It was all staying uniform. Oh, see, I knew that. I just want to see if you knew. Okay, so Terry. <laughs> Why is this doing uh, that? It's a uniform scale. Excellent answer. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and just come back over here so you guys get the idea of what's going on. Basically, when Jimmy I... Gives me one. I know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, er- <laughs> so earlier when I split this sphere in half, we uh, we created this little dilemma for us, right? Right. Because we now need what's called mapping coordinates so that 3D Studio Max would know how to apply this new special kind of paint, <laughs> which has this texture. So we'll go ahead and turn our sub-object off, and we'll go ahead and come back over to the Create panel and bring the material editor back up. So as you can see, what we're getting at, as you're now sitting there staring at your screen going, I don't know what they're talking about. Don't worry, we're going to get into all these things in depth with a lot of instruction behind them and how they work. But right now I'm just showing you that, you know, we create our paints inside the material editor that we can apply to our scene. And here I just created a simple color. Over here I have created an actual uh, texture that we can apply. So that's our material editor. Pretty simple? Yeah. Okay, cool. now let's go ahead and come back in here to Kristen. Oh, uh, she thought I was serious. No, I was just finishing what I was talking about. Go ahead, Kristen. We I'm all just love Kristen. Ask the I know. Go ahead now. Um, you I, know was, I was on a roll, man. I had to finish that one thing. <laughs> you know how, like, when you create a like an object and it gives it its own little pretty color, and yeah. you create another one, it gives a different pretty yes. color. Yes. Uh huh. I just wonder if it renders that gray color, like in the material editor, or if it renders out the color it's given when renders you create out the it. color it's given. Okay. The I just default color. That. That's a good question. It is good. No. Nah. No. It's oh, okay. <laughs> We're just kidding. Well, We're we had a lady that asked that question with one the, time. With the color it gives it anyway. It's just a random color that all objects are assigned. That's all. Can and you make – can you no. set that? No. Any, anyway? can, yes, we can change yes, that color. Can. I can go ahead and close my little paint shop here, my mm-hmm. material editor, come over here to this pink color because perhaps I don't like it. And exactly. And down here where it's – you can see the color that it's yeah. at it. I can simply click on that and – can you set it so it doesn't give it a random color? It just gives it one certain color? Not that I've ever seen. Okay. Yes, you can. All righty. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Where do we go? You go down here. Okay. To here. Okay. Turn off assign random colors. Look at that, Terry. And if so you go up good. here to any color up here, you and can. select it? Select, let's say we want the pretty green And all color. objects will be? All, actually, uh, all objects will start turning that color. So, in other words, if we come in here and create a sphere, sphere, There you sphere, go. We're now loving green. Exactly. But That's you just great. did a big no-no, j- uh, Busby. <laughs> <laughs> no one can remember our name. We will die. We're supposed to be hiding from people here, not giving our names. Only one in six states. So you mess up my first yeah. name and give them my last. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> we'll just bleep that out. <laughs> Beep. Uh, yeah, I get. No, it's uh, yeah, whatever. whatever. Who cares? Yeah, okay. So, anyways, you're saying you made a big mistake, like I did. <laughs> what big mistake did I make? You created in the perspective viewport. But we're not building anything for real yet. Yeah, but you're still not supposed to do that. You yelled at me enough. I can yell at you now. <laughs> but we're not talking to our beginners about creating stuff. But you just did. <laughs> That's Adam, my point. <laughs> Adam, can I? <laughs> it's so off the wall. I can't even ask. Adam, did I borrow your degree? <laughs> Hey, boys! <laughs> if the earth was made of spare ribs, <laughs> would you eat it? No! I know I would. I'd have seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. But still, that's wrong, and you know it. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just calling you it's, on that one. It's not necessarily wrong if you're a professional 3D animator. Oh, how so? Because my world actually is you? right. <laughs> no. My world axis is right with my sphere. Okay, I'm going to sit here and shut up now. <laughs> but uh, but let's give Terry some credit. As for this right here, this is awesome. As you saw, I just come in here and uncheck the assign random color. So cool. take that. So we'll go ahead and put that back on. So there you go. <laughs> See what you caused? Yeah. <laughs> Interstellar war now. <laughs> just go play in the road, okay? Let us know how it is. Make sure it's the highway, not the one out here that doesn't have a lot going on. Okay, so now that we've created a whole bunch of spheres, Terry's been freaked out. Kristen's mad, and Adam's still saying, Doritos? <laughs> let's go ahead and move on. So, again, let's go ahead and scroll back on over. We had just got finished talking about our, what are these again, Adam? What's this guy? I have no clue. <laughs> the pivot thing. I have no clue. And this guy? 
open schematic. No, it's view. called the schematic view. But yes, that button will open. <laughs> <the schematic view. laughs> you should stop reading stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then over here, let's let's ask Christy because she'll get this. And this one is material editor. Awesome. Give right. her the easy <laughs> ones. <laughs> What's so easy? It's like it has pretty colors. <laughs> that has yellow and gray and red. So they're not oh. pretty. So it's hot. <laughs> oh, that must be hot though. <laughs> Dude, I'd be scared if I saw yeah. a hot dog. <laughs> it tastes like paint. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, over in this next section here. Oh, the render smoke. scene button. Now we've got our render scene dialog button. Now we've got several different render buttons up here. We've got four of them. This one right here, by clicking on it, will give us our render scene dialog where we can set options. <laughs> you okay, man? <laughs> oh, you know, Adam just gets me going there. <laughs> I just think he, I just keep thinking of his hot dog and world currency plan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, in my bank account. I'd like to deposit thirty six thousand dollars. <laughs> That'll be two dollars. Oh man! All right. So, anyways, inside our render scene dialog right now, what we've got are settings that we can set for the current render. So, basically, if I wanted to come in here and render a single frame or uh, the entire active uh, sec time segment, which we'll get to that shortly. Uh, if I wanted to render out to a particular file, the resolution. We'll cover all these things a little bit later on, but these are just different settings that I can make to my render. And they're pretty basic. So They are pretty basic until you start getting down in here into to the fun stuff. render elements, which is, you know, you get ready for some compositing uh, action or all this other stuff as Kristen's now going, you just say it don't mean anything to me. I didn't understand a word you just said. <laughs> Your lips are moving, but I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the only thing I want you to get out of this is knowing that you are making settings for your renderer. Repeat that to me, Kristen. Settings for your renderer. What about settings for the renderer? <laughs> what? Well, that, I just repeated you. What? You're making it. You're making them. That's right, Logan. Logan's serious, man. Did you even talk into the mic, though? No. <laughs> <laughs> the mic was down there by You're his knee. <laughs> What is that for, Logan? What's this whole dialogue for? Making settings in the renderer. Making settings for the renderer. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Okay, it's not funny. We're, <laughs> we're getting rid of Kristen tonight. <laughs> she's uh, she's too much trouble. Okay. Now, when we're working inside the renderer, okay. Hey, it's renderer. Okay. When we're working inside here, we do have production and draft. So we can make different settings in here for the production, if we're going to render out with a production setting. And then we can have draft settings as well where we may want to go in here and tell it to, let's see, some good examples. Don't do shadows. Don't do mapping. Don't do any anti-aliasing. Just turning off those three things, even though right now they mean absolutely nothing to you. Exactly. Later they will. Oh, yep. And you got the CD where you can rewind and rewatch this. Yes, you can. Uh, basically, by having the draft have these things disabled and the production, if we came back down here, they would still be enabled. When we performed a draft render, it would be way faster than a production render. Okay? Yeah. So handy to know, right? Yes. So anyways, after making these settings, you can hit close and it will store them for you, okay? Or you can hit render and go ahead and actually render out your scene. So we'll go ahead and just hit close, and it'll save that. Now, so this was our render scene button. Mm -hmm. Over next to it, we have our quick render button. And if we click, you see it's a little, little fly out, right? Right. So if we click and we get our little fly out, we get our production, our draft, and we get active shade. And we'll talk about active shade here shortly. So if I did settings over here, all right, let's just see how bad the movie's going to handle this. So render... Uh, no, we don't want to render out a whole sequence. Let's go back in here. I want to do a single frame. Let's close it. Let's do a render. Holy cow, it's big. Let's move it over here. There's our render, even though we don't have no shadows going on. Let's see if we can get anything that looks a little bit sloppier when I come and do a draft render. And a little bit rougher if you look around the edges right here. That's all. Now, this, of course, video file is going to be shrunk down in size. But what you're going to get is these rough, jaggedy edges because we're not doing any type of clean anti-aliasing. Anti That's right. Yeah. So uh, basically what we've got is a faster render. So all this area over here is, and I'll go ahead and switch back, which is going to do a quick render, is just a way to come in and perform a quick production render. Notice with a little pop-up it says production out to the right. Right. A draft or the active shade, which we'll talk about in a minute. Another cool thing about rendering is we have the ability to come in here, and right now we're rendering the entire view but we can do a selected area or a region. Pretty cool to be able to come in and say, give me a region 
render, and we get this little box in here that I can come and say, I'm only interested in this area right in here, and then tell it, okay, and it only renders that one little area. It mm -hmm. keeps this window right here with your last render in it, so if you're making small changes in one little area, it'll just update, update that area. And that's extremely handy when making little tweaks. So yeah, like cool. lighting or textures. Exactly. Or gloss or something. So we'll go ahead and change this back to view. But there are a bunch of different settings in here we'll talk about later on. Uh, over next to it, we have render last. Render last can be extremely helpful because basically as you are inside your different viewports, uh, whichever one is active, whichever one is currently highlighted and you hit the render, that's going to be the viewport that's going to render. Okay? Right. Now, um, down here in my perspective view, if I render, okay, and then I come up here and I hit render again, it's going to render this one. But if I rendered here, then I came up here to this view, and I selected on the render last, it will render this viewport down here. It will render the last viewport that you did the render from. Right. Okay? So that can be very handy. Exactly. Now, uh, our active shade over here, our active shade can be kind of demanding on our system, but what it will do... Let's see if we can make it. Let's try this out real quick. A 320. Let's close that. Let's do a render. Let's pull this over. Boom. Let's do a render of this viewport instead. Okay. And there's the render. Now if I wanted to come in here and place a, this is going to be kind of tight, light in my scene. And this just updated with that light in real time. If I wanted to, let's say, pull this up, again, we get an update, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. If with the light selected, I wanted to come over here for some reason, say, cast shadows, and make a change to, let's say, our color. Close that out. Now you can see we're starting to get some changes occurring Ooh. back over here. Right. Perhaps even turn our intensity up so it's a, a more noticeable effect. There you go. So what we're getting is a render that is now updating based off of changes that we're making to colors and different parameters on our lights and our materials. Okay, Very handy for quickly tweaking the scene. So that's Active Shade. Okay. Next thing I want to do is talk about the Command Panel. So this whole section up underneath here is the Command Panel. Command Panel by default is on the Create Panel right here. The Create Panel is where you can come and create stuff. Let me go ahead and get all the clutter off my screen by coming up to File, doing a reset. No, we don't want to save anything. And yes, we really do want to reset. All right, so here we are, back to default with 3ds Max. So up here creates the very first command uh, or very first ta uh, panel. Blah, 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 excuse me. Up underneath it, we have our different categories of objects that we can create. Right now, geometry is selected, and I can come in here and start creating geometry. And we'll talk more about how to create geometry shortly. Uh, we have now even up under this. Now remember, these are categories, right? Right. We even have subcategories. Where right now we're creating, even though it's geometry, we're creating just standard primitives. Right. And that's what's available down here, standard primitives. But I do have the ability of coming in and let's say I want to create extended primitives, where maybe for some reason I want to create a prism or something. Um, for whatever reason, or an oil tank, which everybody wants to make an oil tank. Those right? actually make blow so up pretty good. So. You like those? Yeah, they blow up really nice. So, uh, anyways. <laughs> Fire shooting okay. out, it's great. So, uh, anyways, so uh, there's a bunch of different things that we can come up under here and create, and we'll be taking a look at some of those a little bit later on, and then some of the advanced uh, training CDs, without a doubt, will be coming all through this and exploring all the different things. Now, I'll go ahead and switch back to standard primitives. And again, coming back across in my categories quickly, we have shapes. We have lights, we have cameras, we have helpers, we have space warps, and we have systems. Okay? Pretty, pretty right, straightforward. Right, yes. Now, what do they all do? This is not the place nor the time. Exactly. All right. So, again, coming back and across, of course, as we was going through them, you saw each of these different categories had their own level of sub-objects. Right. Okay? There's many, many yeah, sub-objects. <laughs> now, coming over to our second panel on our command panel, panel is the modify panel. This is where we work with our modifier stack, and we can apply modifications to the geometry that is selected in our scene. This is where you'll be doing a lot of modeling from. Exactly. Okay? Next is the hierarchy panel. In the hierarchy panel, this is where we'll be doing a lot of things. We're working with an object's pivot point. Um... Let's see. What else we got? We're working with IK settings and restrictions and link information. Link okay. Advanced things when we get more into animation. From there, let's go ahead and come over here to the motion panel. <clears throat> Depending on how carried away I get in this very CD <laughs> right here, we may come over here later, right? Yes. I mean, I may want to come in here and open this up and 
come down to position. And, what do you think I'm going <laughs> to do, Terry? Well, you come might want to stop. You're confusing a lot of people. And start. Okay, basically, <laughs> yeah. you want a noise? Yeah, do it. All right, so we'll come in here and let's put a first. I I'm hate gonna, you. First, <laughs> first I'm going to come down and sorry put guys, a let you get away with this. Position list on this, and then I'll go ahead and expand this and select my available track. Add another controller, and you want me to put noise? noise. I'm position. looking position noise. noise. Up, 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 right there. And okay. Is there one called confusion? And <laughs> this dialogue. And oh, this is easy. Come on. I know it is, but it's. It's pretty advanced for a beginner, though. It's Kristen. I'm a beginner. I've never Look hey, man. Beginner. Look at that. Pretty. We have animation. And we didn't, and we didn't, yeah, we didn't animate special. a single thing. Right? That's I mean, we, so fun. Yeah, I mean, we can even <laughs> come in here. And, you'd be great for commercials. <laughs> you've got to buy this because <laughs> it's, it's so, so fun. fun. <laughs> so I can come down here to rotation. And again, I'll just come up here and assign a controller, rotation list, so I don't mess up the current rotation that's on it. Expand, come down up underneath TCB rotation, grab my available track, and come down here and we'll put a noise rotation on it. And then inside this right here, perhaps I want to turn this off. And let's go ahead and bring our frequency down. Don't turn it way up. No, 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 because <laughs> it'll get really rough. <laughs> and I don't want these to I don't want the strength to be so high, so let's say it can rotate no more than about twenty five degrees in all three of these. All right, and so we'll just move this on over to the side and rewind and hit play and wow, <coughs> yay! Do you like that, I like it a lot. Okay, <laughs> so uh, so now that we've done all sorts of advanced level animation, you can see how by <laughs> you see why we're going to wait now. <laughs> so now you can see that we've come over here to the motion panel and done cool stuff. From there, uh, we've got the display panel. Display panel is important. We'll talk more about it a little bit later. We can come in here, though, and we can hide stuff, unhide stuff, hide by name. We can freeze our objects. That becomes extremely important. Freeze it. I can't select it no more. That is because your object is frozen. So I'll come in here and unfreeze all. <laughs> uh, sorry. And uh, from there, I'll come over to the last one, which is our utilities, which is basically a whole bunch of stuff that comes along with 3D Studio Max that really had no other place that it could fit. <laughs> exactly. All so the stuff that's left over is right there. So it's like, hey, Johnny, I created this cool new tool, man. Where do I put it under which thing? I don't know. Let's add a utilities tab. Excellent. Stick it there. So And they gave you a cool hammer picture. Yes, and it's a cool hammer picture. <laughs> so there's a bunch of different things under here. And also, just like pointing this out, more. And there's all sorts of things under here. And you can add all of these uh, into buttons. If I came in here, Whoa. you can customize this and add a whole bunch of them. <laughs> and that's not all. <laughs> Logan's digging that. So let's go ahead and hit cancel. So this is our command panel. Command panel is really nice, handy. Uh, coming down up underneath it, we get into our viewport navigation controls, and we'll be talking about viewport navigation controls shortly. But real quick, there are ways that we can come in here and move our viewports around. Exactly. Next to that, we have our animation controls. We'll look at these closer when we get into the animation section. But, you know, if you have animation, you've got your play button. You've got your rewind to the start. You've got go to next frame, one frame at a time, backwards one frame at a time. Go to the end of the animation. What frame am I currently on? Go to 50, enter. You get the point? Yes. Good. Very basic. Up over here, animate. By turning the animate button on, your active viewport, we'll talk more about those in the viewport section, is now highlighted red. And down here in our time slider, it's highlighted red, letting you know, warning, you are now <laughs> recording any parameter change that you make to an object. Can't really miss that. So, yeah, they've made it pretty flashy. I'll yes. give them credit for that. It's it used animating! To, it, used to be just this, it used to be just this button turning red. Yeah. And, and there'd be nothing more fun than watch a beginner student that would turn it on. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, too, don't you? That was me. <laughs> I've done that, like, twice. Like, leaving the button on and, like, going through and making changes, making changes. And, you like, you change this because you're looking at some other part of your animation. Then later on, you, like, come back and you're like, oh, man, it's all messed up. <laughs> well, the screen was aware of that, too. And just for you, Terry, they've now made half the UI flash red. Yeah. Okay. So Sorry. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Thanks, guys. Uh, up, underneath, or up over here to the left, we've got a few other things where... If we wanted to, with our object selected, we can come over here and we can type in absolute coordinates, okay, mm -hmm. for X, Y, and Z. Same thing you guys saw earlier that if I was to come up here and right-click on this actual transform, you know, I could come and type them in. You can see negative 19.157 on X, and I also have negative 19.157 down here. It's just a quick way to get to this type in. Just a transform. little shortcut. Yeah, it's just a shortcut. They have this cool little button over here to the side, which is right now I'm moving absolute world, or if I click on it, now it's relative, and you see how these have reset to zero. Exactly. So if I wanted to move this up precisely five units, I could just simply come over to Z and type in five and 
Now it's moved up five units. Exactly. Pretty easy. Yep. Okay, we've got a few more things. we got our snapping down here. We'll get more into snapping when we start talking about modeling. And over to that. Next to that, we've got degradation override. Very important this if you have is, a slow computer. This is very important if your computer is slow. Right mm -hmm. now, you'll notice mine is turned on, and I can come in here, and I'll grab my little arc rotate tool, and I rotate around, and everything's nice and fast. Agreed? Agreed. Right. If I come in here and turn this off and now begin rotating around, look what uh, happens. Okay. It switches. Now, it's kind of misleading with a box, wouldn't you think? Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's do something other than a box. Let's do a sphere. sphere. Yeah. Or the teapot. Okay, we'll do a teapot because they're cool. Yeah. Teapot. Woohoo! All right. That's, that's funny. It just standard? makes a teapot. That's a primitive? I can't believe that's a It is a standard <laughs> primitive. <laughs> there is a history behind it. Yes, there is, and this isn't the place. But right. If I, if I come over here to the modify, I could even say teapot, body parts. The body, <laughs> the handle. I don't want a handle. I don't want a spout. And I don't want a lid. You you, you will not believe anymore. how many times you actually use the teapot button. <laughs> I, I swear, I, yes, I've used that quite a few times. So here's our teapot, but now watch what happens if I come over here and start rotating around. Okay. <sighs> yep. Look what's going on. Turns it into a box. Yep. And we are just seeing the bounding box for the object. That's all. Basically, a box that just fits around all of the extremities of exactly. the object. Exactly. Very good. Okay, so uh, so anyways, having this on, if you've got a pretty decent machine, turning it off if you don't have a pretty decent machine can become important. Earlier, we took a look at our little crossing selection and window selection here. Basically, I was you know, showing you guys that it's all about when you're marquee selecting around something. If the object has to be completely inside your marquee section or if the line is able to just simply touch it. Exactly. Okay. And then we've got keyboard shortcut overrides where you can override all of your default sh uh, Shortcut keys with a whole other series of shortcut keys. Exactly. Cool. So you can have 20 billion shortcut keys. Which is, uh, yeah. Which is, could be good. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And then uh, <laughs> I just want to keep this real quick uh, since we're getting close to being done. Our lock button over here, space bar also, we'll toggle that on and off. Right. If you come in here and select an object, lock it, you cannot select another object. That's handy to know. Yes. And um, right now one of my transform tools is active. With this not locked, I have to actually place my mouse over that object before I can see, see how it's an arrow, it's an arrow, it's an arrow. Now it's a series of arrows indicating I can move, right? Right. So I have to place the mouse over it. But by locking an object, notice I can put my mouse anywhere in any of the viewports because it knows what's up. Exactly. Like it knows that's the object I'm moving, period. Okay? Finally, over here, I can just kind of slide this over real quick. We're looking at our Mac script area where we can come in and do scripting. We can right-click. Come in here, open up our listener, and we can start typing stuff in, and we can also see stuff. Everything that's... we've done. Yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> that's, that's for pretty advanced stuff right there, though. That means I'll close this window for now. Yes. All right, good enough. <laughs> Just pretend that's not there for right now. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close that. <laughs> Finally, last thing I want to talk about, up here we have our time slider. Okay, you can drag your time slider to any given frame. And up underneath that, we have what is called the track bar. The track bar will show you your frames along with any animation, any keyframes that you have in a scene. In other words, if I take my teapot, hit animate, move my time slider, and move my object, you'll, and let's do one over here too, turn animate back off, you'll see now that I have a keyframe down here at the beginning, a keyframe over here, and a keyframe over here. Pretty exactly. Handy. We'll probably get into that later in the animation section. Yeah, though. I would think so. So, um... Finally, the last thing you have in the center are these gigantic windows. Yes, viewports. Yes, and we've got a whole section dedicated to viewports coming up, and we'll save it till then. Okie dokie. So this is, uh, while this is an extensive look, mm -hmm. and Adam's brain is fried, <laughs> Kristen's still not happy. I'm happy. Logan's happy. I'm so glad Logan's here. I now. hate you. <laughs> That's okay. Everybody hates Buzz, yeah. <laughs> but I still try to help the world. <laughs> so uh, anyways, uh, even though it was an extensive, long look at the UI with a few advanced topics that we've <laughs> taken a look at, I wasn't... <laughs> Do what? <laughs> hey, it's free. <laughs> Isn't it? It's free and it's very high so quality. So free. I mean, come on. Even if we are just laughing, cutting up, and Kristen's sitting over there mad at me, does it really That's matter? That's right. Does it really matter? No. Evil eye. It's what? free. What? Oh, yeah, she's giving me the evil eye, guys. You guys can't evil see. Evil eye. Thank heavens. So uh, <laughs> that's okay. Before our next recording, I'll just put Adam right between us, and we'll be <laughs> I can look at Adam all day long. Take hey, the buddy. brunt of it. Hey, man. You remind me of this guy I met once. He was like mm. an idiot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
I guess bread smells like cat food. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes just, like burning. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to give you an opening to say something. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, if I I gotta be careful though because Angela's sitting back there and she's gonna hit me in the back of the head with a book in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and conclude this section of the user interface. If any of it seemed confusing, well, welcome rewind to DS Max. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's a it's a great application. It's very easy to use. You can rewind and rewatch a section. Some of the more advanced things that we took a look at, we'll be covering those in depth in this CD and others coming up. And also, if you have any questions, you can always post it on the forum. Absolutely, because we're here to help you out. Always. Always. So, thanks a lot, guys. That's it for this section. <laughs>